my father uh, had Huntington's and uh, later on we found out that my grandfather had it too, but at the time we thought that he just had dementia. Um, and uh, we found out about Huntington's in my family when he started acting really strangely and um, we eventually got some tests and found out that it was Huntington's um, and I was, uh, uh, I think I was about 16 or 17 at that time and uh, I have an older sister who uh, was three years older than me. Um, so we spent a lot of time dealing with Dad and... Uh, both of us decided uh, that we wanted to get tested. Uh, and so we did that when we were about uh, uh, just over 18, 19. Uh, and so both of us got tested and my sister tested gene negative and I tested gene positive. I hadn't been seeing my partner too long uh, before I wanted to tell her about testing. Uh, I think that it's something that's really in your mind uh, and uh, for me, I kind of wanted just to sort of get it kind of out in the open, sort of sort of out, off the radar, not you know, and try to deal with it early so that if it wasn't going to work out, that if she wasn't kind of happy with that information, that uh, I didn't waste all this time in a relationship to find out that, uh, that uh, she wasn't going to stick around. So I think I told her about... Uh, about a month, uh, six weeks into our relationship. I think before with um, girls that I dated before, because I was a bit younger and not so um, intense that it didn't sort of really seem to matter either way, but I remember with my uh, partner that uh, I was really keen on her, that, I, that she was someone that I thought was really special and so I must admit that I was much more anxious uh, because I felt like there was more uh, at, at stake. Uh, and I think that I was pretty convinced at the time that she wasn't going to like the information and that she would most likely leave. And so I was pretty concerned that it was going to be kind of ending something that was good before it got started. Um, I ummed and art a lot and didn't really, wasn't very uh, clever in the way that I did it. Uh, I just, uh, we just went down to the beach on, we were having a walk and... Uh, and uh, I just started telling her about my uh, family and I'd already told her that uh, my dad was sick uh, and uh, she was aware of that, although she hadn't uh, met him. But I then uh, started by telling her about uh, my dad and then explaining about Huntington's and then uh, telling her about the fact that it's a genetic disease and that, uh, that I was also going to get uh, Huntington's down the track. Um, I, I think that it was really uh, hard because not knowing anything about HD at the time, um, I think she reacted in a really emotional way uh, and being obviously really concerned that it uh, was a um, probably more of like an immediate thing. Like I think that she thought that almost like I had uh, told her that I had uh, six months to live or I'd got cancer or, you know, something like that, that... Uh, so she reacted in that sort of way, um, but it wasn't until later uh, that she that I'd found out that once we went home that night and, and then she went back to her house that she hopped on the internet and uh, did a whole lot of reading about it and uh, that really shaped her opinion because it relaxed her that, yes, this was really um, a big deal, but that... It wasn't like a crisis that we had to uh, cope with in the next two months. It was going to be uh, something different, something different. But I remember being very, really, really concerned about um, her meeting uh, my dad uh, because that was the only example that she was going to get of HD and he was in the um, reasonably late stages of HD at that time and and so for someone that's not sort of familiar with that, it's quite confronting. Um, and so I felt like even though I had told her about me being gene positive and about HD, that I still had a big um, 
hill to climb or another big thing was that she had sort of had to have met my dad too to kind of put all that into place. Um, so I tried to arrange a time for her to come and visit uh, him with me. Uh, and I think that was another big part of the um, telling process because she had a reaction when I first told her and then she sort of had a different reaction again after she'd done some more reading about HD or that we talked about it more. But I think particularly after seeing my dad being so sick that that was really upsetting for her and so it kind of um, went from being really emotional to kind of being a bit more pragmatic because we'd sort of were looking at the information and then it got really emotional again after after she met my dad. Even after telling her and for the, we've been married for um, seven or eight years now and uh, that process is always uh, continuing about the balance between um, believing that it's not going to happen or accepting that what does it mean and I think with Huntington's it's really complicated because you have uh, a modified or, you know, a different gene and uh, you are going to show some symptoms and sometimes those symptoms can be, um, uh, can be really difficult, but uh, you're kind of okay at that moment, you know, you're okay and it's fine. And so from a relationship point of view, there's a really big question about how you have that relationship, what are the the fundamentals that you, you do because you're, it's not like you have six months to live so you quit your jobs and travel around the world and do some fun stuff. You have to kind of work out how to have like a sort of a normal relationship because you're going to have 10 or 20, maybe 30, 40 years worth of just normal. But then also you're kind of dealing with the fact that because you don't know when it starts that you might not have that time and so you're trying to work out how to make that relationship special so that you can enjoy it uh, every day for what it is and not kind of leave anything out. So that takes a continuous adjustment all the time and um, a lot of the time or occasionally one of us will drift outside, you know, often it's me when I get a bit freaked out about um, that think I, I think I might be showing symptoms or that... Um, uh, and uh, you kind of have to work out a way to come back to a sort of a normal, if there's any such thing as normal place, and that can um, be really hard and, and take time, but I think the important thing for the relationship is to have a really open and clear communication that if you're feeling that something's on your mind that you have to uh, talk about it. You can't not in trying to pretend that you're protecting someone or that you think you don't want to hurt them by saying something maybe that's on your mind. You have to have brutal honesty and I think that's why our relationship works well because we just put it all out there and even if that is normal or crazy thoughts, it at least it's out there and once it's out there we can kind of work out how to wade through it and find a, you know, a nice place for us to, you know, sit for now. When my partner and I were thinking of having children, it was really two stages. The first one was to think about whether we wanted to have them at all, uh, which took a while for us. Once we decided we wanted to have children, uh, we were open, we had the options of having them naturally or uh, having uh, PGD uh, IVF where they do a genetic um, makeup or workup of uh, the embryo uh, before going through IVF and so you have the chance to screen out um, any embryos that uh, have the mutation so that um, you can be confident that when you have the baby that that baby doesn't have HD. I think uh, a lot of our decision around IVF, uh, choosing to go through IVF was about the kind of people that or personality type that we had 
And one of the things that um, I'm uh, really uh, uh, about is that I like to try to take as much control as I can. It's a, a sort of a personality thing for me outside and inside sort of HD. But I feel like for me, having the information allows me to make a decision. And so for me, the IVF was a preferred option because I felt like I could try to take some control of the uh, outcome about what would happen with my children. Uh, also, growing up, <coughs> excuse me, also growing up with my uh, father being sick um, and knowing that I was going to get sick too, uh, I, I felt it was really important for me that uh, that that didn't happen for another generation and that it was going to be hard enough for my kids to watch me and that sort of what I could do for them was for them not to have to do go through that. And so IVF would seem to be the best option to get me those, those results. Going through IVF is really uh, complicated and, and draining for anybody it, because the, a woman has to have a lot of uh, injections and uh, in a lot of hormones and it's quite, there's a lot of um, medical procedures that you have to go through and it's really uh, quite invasive. And so anyone that goes through IVF before the Huntington's is, goes through a tough enough time. There's also no guarantee that you will get pregnant even if you go through IVF. So you might have to do that three or four or five or six times before you get pregnant even if you do. So those really draining uh, periods of time and then the added, the added extra of the Huntington's was something that was just like at the time felt like a bit of a kick in the pants because it was hard enough um, to get the embryos and get them ready and that you're going to put them back in and all those things but then the person, the scientist comes and tells you that of the say eight embryos that were ready to go that they're going to have to take out five or six or, you know, of those because they had the mutation and so for all that work you end up with maybe one embryo and, of course, that might you might not get pregnant through that. So it's IVF is really tough and then with a PGD it becomes particularly tough because at the worst time that you're feeling emotional and a bit, you know, uncomfortable anyway, they just find another way of... feels like kicking you when, you, when you're down. Um, the other thing that happens with IVF is it takes a long time. By the time you go through the hormones and then the PGD workup, which has its own process, and then you have to try to go through cycles and then maybe you get pregnant, maybe you don't, and then finally you get pregnant and then finally, you know, maybe you have the kids safely. It took us years between the time that we decided to have children and actually uh, the result of having, uh, having children and all through that time is lots of ups and downs. So it was probably the most testing part of my HD experience so far in my life. I found actually the test to find out whether I was gene positive or not and also telling my wife stressful. But I think that for me, having a baby through IVF was the most stressful because I felt that it was really unfair that I had to put my wife through, you know, years of kind of <laughs> mucking around and that um, even though she was great through it, I must admit there was a time that I felt really guilty and really angry about HD because I felt that it was unfair that um, for some reason it seems OK that if HD affects me because I can manage that. But when HD affects someone that you love, you know, it's, it's much harder. We ended up going through four cycles of IVF uh, before we had uh, kids. That was a, a really long journey and uh, really complicated because it's very hard to know when is the right amount of times that you go through IVF and uh, it's expensive. And so sometimes it's the money that makes a decision about whether you can go uh, through it or not. 
Um, but there's always the thought that maybe the, the next time is the one that you're going to have a child in. Um, so we went through three cycles that took a couple of years and uh, we had some rotten luck during that time. Even with one of our cycles had all of the embryos had HD mutation and so they didn't allow, uh, any, we weren't able to use any of them. Uh, and so by the end of the third time, we were really uh, at a low um, because we had had all these injections and procedures and emotions and effort and it just seemed like there was no luck going to be, you know, going to go our way. Um, and then after the third uh, time, I think I felt at that time that I just wanted to, to stop, to put, it, to put it past us and to say that we had a go and that it was uh, not worth, you know, keeping on going. There was time to move on to sort of a different phase and, uh, but my wife was uh, not sure and I think over the time we talked a lot about it and she said that she really wanted to maybe try once more. And uh, it took us a, a long time to think about whether we would do it and eventually we had one more go and we ended up with twins. I think having babies is really a very personal decision for people and I'm not sure that I could give any advice to anybody else about whether they have children or not because there's so many factors that come into it. Things about just whether you want to have children or not that's got nothing to do with HD. There's a lot of uh, Huntington's things that come into it as, as well and then something like with IVF, you know, that it, that can be quite expensive and so there's sometimes some financial things as well that all sort of join together to make you form whether you want to have kids or not. I, th I think I would recommend IVF to people if they uh, felt like that they um, wanted to go, uh, try to have children without giving them the gene. It's really the only way you can do that. I think, though, my advice would be that uh, it's really long and complicated and can be really, really difficult. Um, for me, it was probably the hardest part of my HD journey. I found it very easy, not very easy, I found it OK to go through the testing because it was just about me, but with having children, it was also about my, my wife and that uh, was really hard for me. But I think, like anything, um, Sometimes the result makes you then decide how that process was. So that for us, because we've ended up with um, some kids that are terrific and they've added like so much joy to our lives that when we look back at it now, it seems like totally easy and totally the right thing to do. But I know at the time it was really a long journey and really complicated. So I think that if anybody is thinking about having kids, I would recommend that just to take some time to really think about it and talk about it and not, not rush and just think about the time that's right for them and allow yourself to change your mind or change your opinion halfway through or, you know, whenever it feels right if that, that comes to them because what you learn when you're a year in or after a little while that you have so many different um, new thoughts and so often that can change your mind and so just allow the process to take its natural course and not to feel guilty or pressured to either have kids or not have kids or if you do have kids to have them via IVF or not because it's your journey, it's your life journey and in some ways Huntington's doesn't have anything to do with that. You know, you have to try to have that journey yourself and then try to keep the HD stuff to the, the minimum.